Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. This time we are going to talk about the implementation of uh, compensators used in uh, power electronics converters and based on operational amplifier, OPA, and operational transconductance amplifiers. This is the outline of the presentation. We are going to see an introduction first regarding the OPA and OTA amplifiers then we will see the implementations of the three basic compensators used in the closed loop operation of power electronics converters the type 1, the integrator, the type 2 which is the PI, proportional integral compensator type 3 or PID, proportional integral differential compensator then we will see an example of an integrated circuit that has built in a OTA compensator, an OTA inside, which is the LM3524. And finally, we will see the LT SPICE implementation of operational transconductance amplifiers. Here we can see the basic operation of an operational amplifier versus an operational transconductance amplifier. In an operational amplifier, the output behaves like a voltage source, which uh, has a value uh, equal to the differential gain AD times the differential voltage VD. And also the response in frequency is shown here in this picture. And we can see that we have a DC gain AD0 at first cutoff frequency F0, and then we have a decrease in the differential gain following a slope of minus dB, 20 dB per decade until reaching at a frequency F1, the value of 0 dB. Usually the value of the DC gain is so high that we can consider that it is almost infinite. On the contrary, the behavior of an operational transconductance amplifier is like a current source at the output in which we have this parameter here which is the transconductance value of the amplifier and the output voltage is equal to Gm, the transconductance, times the differential voltage Vd. The transconductance also follows here an evolution in frequency like this one, but now we have to take into account that the unit for the transconductance is ohms to the minus 1. So we have this DC value also for the transconductance, then a cutoff frequency F0, and then the transconductance is going to decrease following the minus 20 dB per decade slope until reaching at a frequency F1, the value in which we have that the transconductance is equivalent to the reciprocal value of the load which is equivalent to having a gain, a voltage gain of 0 dB. Also note that the value of the transconductance, the DC value of the transconductance is not very high, it's a, a limited value, a finite value, so we have to take this into account when analyzing our circuits. Also note that we have used here the units of ohms, but of course we can use also dB ohms to the minus 1 for our calculations and then in this case we have uh, to consider that this slope is going to be minus 20 dB per decade. Let's see here a basic example of how to implement a simple amplifier using an OPA and an OTA. When we use an operational amplifier then we use these two resistances to do the feedback loop and then we have this behavior for the output as we have seen AD times VD. If we analyze this uh, circuit carefully then we will obtain this value of the output voltage which gives us the total gain here times the input voltage VI. In this case if we are using an operational amplifier ID is going to be a very high value 
and therefore we can neglect this part here which is going to be almost zero and the output voltage is going to follow this well-known expression. On the other hand, if we are using an OTA, in this case we can do the same using two resistances in this way, but now we have a current source at the output. So if we analyze our, uh, our circuit here, then we will obtain this expression for the gain. And as we can see, it depends on the transconductance GM. So what we can do in this case in order to simplify is to design our circuit so that the values gm times r1 and gm times r2 are going to be much uh, larger than 1. So in this case also we can uh, neglect here the value, the unit here in the numerator and the denominator and then we will obtain here this expression which is the similar one. Now we will see the different types of compensators implemented with an operational amplifier and an operational transconductance amplifier. The first one is the type 1 compensator, which is equivalent to an integrator. When using an operational amplifier, we do like this. We use an input resistance, R1, and then the capacitor C in the feedback loop. So we have this well-known response, which is 1 over R1C times the Laplace variable. So we have this behavior here, which is equivalent to our, an ideal integrator with a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. If we have an operational transconductance amplifier, we can implement this integrator just by using a capacitor at the output. And then we will have this equivalent behavior, and we can see that it is going to behave like an integrator also. And now we can see that the reciprocal value of the transconductance here plays the same role as the input resistance R1 in the compensator or the integrator implemented with the operational amplifier. This is the type 2 compensator or proportional integral. When implemented with an operational amplifier, we just add this series resistance in series with capacitor C2, and then we will have this behavior in which we have the integral behavior and also the proportional behavior. So the response in frequency is like this, in which we have a pole at the origin, then we have the slope of minus 20 dB per decade until reaching the frequency corresponding to the zero, and then we get this flat gain here with a value AM that can be obtained very easily from the expression. And this will be the behavior of the PI compensator. In order to implement it, it with an operational transconductance amplifier, we do the same. We only just have to add this series resistance R2 in series with capacitor C2 at the output, and then we will have the same behavior. And once again, we can see that the reciprocal value of the transconductance plays exactly the same role as the input resistance in the operational amplifier compensator. And finally, the implementation of the type 3 compensator of, or PID compensator. Here with an operational amplifier, we can see that now we add this capacitor C3 in parallel with R2 and C2. So we are going to have this response here in which we have a pole at the origin, then we have another additional pole and the zero. So the response in frequency is going to be like this one, which is characterized by the frequency of the zero, the frequency of the pole, and then the value of the gain in the uh, flat part of the characteristic. 
In order to implement it with an operational transconduction amplifier, we do similar thing. We just add this capacitor C3 in parallel with R2 and C2. So we have again this response, which is exactly the same as in the case of the operational amplifier, but considering that the reciprocal value of the transconductance plays the same role again as the input resistance. R1. Let's now see an example of an um, IC controller for power electronics converters which has a built-in uh, transconductance amplifier in order to implement the error amplifier. This is the LM3524. Here it uses an OTA in order to implement the error amplifier and it uh, includes other uh, elements like uh, current uh, overcurrent protection, a shutdown circuit, etc. One of the advantages of using operational transconduction amplifiers is that they usually require less uh, silicon area in order to be integrated so they can be made cheaper than when using regular operational amplifiers. Also, the current source output is very convenient to implement things like this, in which we can see that the output of the uh, OTA, of the operational transconductance amplifier, can be short-circuited by other elements, like here the current uh, comparator, the overcurrent comparator, and also the shutdown uh, circuitry. So this allows the manufacturers to implement the controller with a low cost. Other elements that are included in the in the circuit in the LM3524 is the voltage uh, reference in order to do also the closed loop operation, two outputs to control up to two power switches, and then we have an oscillator in order to adjust the switching frequency of our converter. Now, from the information given by the manufacturer, we can obtain the value of the different parameters of the operational transconductance amplifier inside the LM3524. We can model in frequency the OTA using this equivalent circuit here, in which we have the DC value of the transconductance times VD, which is the current source, then we have a parallel resistance RO and then a parallel capacitance CO. And then we have and the load applied at the output. If we look at the characteristic given by the manufacturer, we think we can see this uh, characteristic, which is the in this case it is giving us the voltage gain as a function of frequency. So we have to take this into account. Also in the information we have this information here that the output impedance of the OTA is very high, is around 5 mega ohms. So with this we can obtain the value of RO. Then from the characteristic in frequency we can go to any of these characteristics, for example this one for um, load resistance equal to infinite, so it is open load. And for this we can see the value is 80 dB of the voltage gain. So we have this point here. The voltage gain it will be equal to GMO times RO because we have no load resistance in this uh, operating point. So from this we can obtain finally the value of the DC transconductance which will be equivalent to 2 milliamperes per volt. On the other hand, we can obtain the uh, frequency F1 that we have seen before, which is the frequency at which we have a uh, 0 uh, dB in the voltage gain. So in this case, we have a value of 2 megahertz. So we have that 0 dB of voltage gain is at a frequency of 2 megahertz here. So in, from this, we can obtain the value of the frequency FO, which will be equal to 200 Hz. 
and then with this we can calculate the required value of the output capacitance CO in order to have this cutoff frequency FO, which in this case is equal to 0.159 nanofarads. Now with this information we can create a new component for LT spice in order to implement the OTA available in the LM3524 integrated circuit. Here we show the equivalent circuit. We have included this resistance Ri, which is the input resistance, is resistance between the non-inverting and the inverting input. And then with this we can do very easily the implementation. So here we have developed this uh, symbol for our component, including these parameters, the input resistance, the output resistance, the transconductance, and the cutoff frequency. And then here is the definition in LTSPICE of this component, which is very simple to develop. For more information on how to develop this kind of components for LTSPICE, you can see also this video here, LTSPICE number 3, create new components. If you want to save time, you can access my website shown here and then in the part corresponding to resources, then you can download here my OTA, which is in this um, component ready to be used with LTSPICE. Let's now see an example of using our new component to see if everything is working well. So we have uh, here an amplifier with our operational transconductance amplifier. We are injecting a sinusoidal waveform with one volt peak at, at one kilohertz. And here are the parameters of the OTA, which are the same as those in the LM3524. So we can just run the simulation and see the results. So we can look, for example, at the input. Here we are injecting the 1 volt input, and then we are going to add another pane shown here at the top the input, and here at the bottom we will see the output. So we can see that the peak value should be close to 5 volts. So if we select here the cursor, then go to the top, and then we can see that the value is 4.7 volts. It's not exactly 5 because of the uh, corresponding value of Gm. If we increase the values of R2 and R1, then we will go close to the ideal value of 5. For example, let's use here 500k and 100k here. So if we run again, we can see that now the output voltage is almost 5 volts, four in, uh, sorry, 4.96 volts. This is because now the value of the GM is less relevant because of the high value of the resistances. And now finally we are going to make an AC analysis of our operational transconductance amplifier in order to see if the frequency response is equivalent to that that we have designed. So for this we are going to perform an AC analysis in which we are injecting here an AC voltage of 1 volt peak. Then we are going to do the AC analysis uh, from 1 Hz to 10 MHz. And then we are going to step the load in the same values that we have seen in the uh, datasheet of the manufacturer. So RL is going to change from a list of values which goes from 1000 mega ohms, so this is uh, infinite uh, approximately. Then 1 mega, 1 mega ohm, sorry, 300 kilo ohm, 100 kilo ohm, and 30 kilo ohm, the same values that we can found in the data sheet. So if we run the simulation now, then we can look at the output. 
and see here the different values let's enlarge this so we can see um, here the um, gain and also the phase so there is a trick to see this better we can show the data point so we can see we can see this a little bit better and then we can select for example here the cursor and we can navigate through the different um, characteristic by using the arrows so i can go to the top here and now we are here this pink characteristic corresponds to the value of a low resistance equal to infinite so we can see that the maximum value of the gain the magnitude is 80 dBs okay and if we look or, or search for the uh, cutoff frequency we can just go to the point at which we get the minus 45 degrees in the phase so we can see that the frequency is almost 200 hertz as expected and then we have the other values for the different uh, load resistances for the characteristics that we have seen before we can also go to the value in which we have zero dbs So we can see that it corresponds to the value that we have designed, which is 2 MHz. So everything looks well, so we can use this component in our design for compensators using the LM3524. Well, this is all in this presentation. I hope that it is useful for you. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Goodbye now.